This week on Click, we're mourning the death of analogue TV. As the old transmitters are turned off around the world, we'll guide you through your options for going digital. We'll talk to the man who invented the internet. Well, one of them anyway. Vince Cerf talks about life under the employ of Google and also his visions of the net of the future. Stick around to find out what on earth has made me audition for a part in Star Trek and then Kate goes where no man has gone before in Webscape. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. But since last Wednesday, this is all you get if you switch your TV to BBC Two in the Whitehaven area of Cumbria in the UK. The old analogue TV transmitter serving the harbour town has been turned off for good. See, BBC Two is a complete waste of space. Although you tend not to say that sort of thing that loudly around these parts. But it's true. And all the other channels are a waste of space too. TV pictures have been broadcast as analog radio waves for decades and they take up an awful lot of room in the radio spectrum. Newer digital television is a much better broadcast system, which is why every country will eventually switch off its analog transmitters and switch over to digital. <laughs> Digital TV promises a much richer viewing experience. Cleaner pictures with no interference or ghosting. Program listings. Football from whichever angle you choose. Interactive services. Gambling. And many more channels. Efficiently packed into the space occupied by just a few analogue ones. And almost certainly, teleshopping on at least half of them. First to switch off, all their analogue transmitter masts have been Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Finland and Andorra. Many other countries are already running digital transmissions and will switch off analogue in the next few years. Right, first thing to say... There are several ways to get digital TV, several digital platforms, depending on how much you want to spend and how far into next-gen TV you want to get. Many countries have always received TV via a terrestrial signal broadcast from masts around the country and received through rooftop or set-top aerials. Your first digital platform is the replacement digital terrestrial signal. All you need to receive it is a suitable aerial, your existing one may well do, and then either a digital receiver like these or a new digital TV set with a digital receiver built in. Digital terrestrial may be the most accessible, but it also gives the most limited service. It shares the radio spectrum with many other services, radio, Wi-Fi, taxi cab, and therefore the bandwidth available is limited, and so is the number of channels it can carry. That said, it's still considerably more than analogue. For those who want a wider choice, there's the extra terrestrial option. Out in space, hundreds of satellites beam TV to countries around the world. To get digital satellite TV, along with a digital receiver, you'll need one of these. Richard Lindsay Davies is Director General of the Digital Television Group, an independent organisation which is facilitating the digital switchover in the UK. The capacity, if you like, the pipe that we put all the information down available on digital satellite is much greater than that available on terrestrial. Uh, for various technical, physical reasons, um, which it means that there are hundreds rather than tens of channels available on satellite. Um, and those channels not only come off the one satellite that, that's particularly pointing at the UK, but it's possible that um, uh, other services broadcast throughout Europe could also be picked up on a satellite dish. Our next digital platform takes us from high above the Earth to deep under it. If you can get a cable to your house, you're opening up a direct link to and from your service provider, down which you can get all kinds of lovely stuff. Wire, or even better, fibre optic cable, is much better at transmitting data than air. Roy Brooker is the principal scientist at Intertech and has consumer tested digital TV kit for many years. Cable is a very good platform for digital television. Like satellite, it's, it's a, a, a dedicated path to your house and they can use the bandwidth available to them most efficiently. In fact, they have actually no restrictions on bandwidth at all other than the performance of the cable. As long as the cable in your country is up to the job, this means the most channels and the most extra services. Also, the direct line back to your service provider should allow full-on interactive services like games and shopping too, along with video on demand. That's programs streamed from your provider to your receiver when you want.
In fact, even if you can't get dedicated cable to your home, it's possible to get video on demand and live TV over your broadband connection, if it's fast enough. It's called IPTV. It's worth noting that although IPTV stands for Internet Protocol TV, that doesn't make it Web TV. IPTV is very different to Web TV. Web TV, you're not guaranteed a quality of service. You may get a little six inch by six inch picture in the centre of your screen, whereas IPTV is a guaranteed quality of service. It appears just as if it's coming through terrestrial, normal cable or satellite, um, but it does have all those options uh, of in good interactive TV, video on demand, and exciting new services that they can bring by having a one-to-one -one link between the consumer's home and the broadcaster. So what about this claim that digital TV gives us better pictures than analogue? I mean, no interference, no ghosting, great. But is there something they're not telling us? The truth is that digital TV picture quality is variable. How much detail there is in a picture depends on several factors, including how much is going on in the shot and how much bandwidth a particular channel has paid for. Too much action and too little bandwidth and the whole thing could turn into a blocky mess. When we first went digital, here in the labs, and the general consensus was that digital was poorer quality, ignoring the, the fact that you don't get ghosting and interference. And the problem with fast moving pictures, particularly football matches where the camera panned, where the picture either went blocky or the grass, if, if the camera was stationary, you've got these beautiful, very clear blades of grass, the camera would pan and the, the football pitch would become a snooker table. And, and this is a side effect of the digital compression. And the only way you can overcome it is by broadcasting fewer channels within the frequency band. But again, it's, it's a balance between quantity and quality. And you have the choice with digital television. You can have a large number of channels at no better quality than analog. You can have even more channels at lower quality than analog. Or you can have a few channels at better quality. Of course, high definition TV is on its way, promising higher quality pictures and less detail loss. But the question remains, will the broadcasters make sure they buy enough bandwidth to give us the full quality we've been promised? That, though, is a story for another day. In the meantime, we'd be really interested in your experiences and thoughts on digital TV. So why not email them to click at bbc.co.uk and we will broadcast them to the world. Now, news. MySpace and Skype have penned a deal which will allow MySpace's 25 million instant message users to make free internet phone calls. Part of the MySpace IM feature, the service will initially roll out in 20 countries. While calls to other Skype and MySpace IM accounts will be free, calls to landlines or mobiles will, of course, incur costs. How else do you think these two new media behemoths are going to make a buck? The service is due to launch in November. An interesting twist in the digital rights management debate. For the die-hard 4.0 American DVD release, 20th Century Fox is including an extra DRM-free version of the movie in the package. Called Digital Copy, a version of the film that's been formatted as a file will be embedded in the DVD. The movie can be transferred to computers or mobile devices that support Microsoft's Plays for Sure system. So far, this feature will only be included in the US release, but Fox says it's considering digital copy for further global releases. And finally, the International Federation of the Phonographic Industry, or IFPI, 